Hello, and thank you for choosing the Food Safety Administration. You have just chosen the first step to becoming a true food safety professional in your industry. We'll be breaking the training up into seven different segments. After each segment, there are quizzes to take, and we ask that you take those quizzes. And the best gauge of your knowledge in being prepared for your exam is that you should be scoring an 85 or higher on every one of these exams. That's when you'll know that you are truly ready. But it's important to understand that the purpose of this class and, and the reasons that you're here far exceed your employer's need or your state health department's needs. The problems we're having with food safety in this country are enormous and much greater than most people realize. Each year, one out of every four Americans contracts some form of a foodborne illness. And when you think about the numbers of that, we're talking about over 300,000 people a year that we're getting sick with our food in one form or another. Sometimes it's something as light as, you know, I don't feel so good the next day after you've eaten. Other people end up in the hospital. And about 5,000 people every single year end up dead. Think about that for a moment. 5,000 people a year. We're basically killing 100 people every single week in this country from our food. And you know, we need to look at the reasons why. And it's one of the reasons why you're here today getting certified in this. We need to reduce these numbers. These numbers have been around for a while. You know, we, we've been tracking these numbers very closely now for 20 some odd years. And the amazing thing is they're not getting any better. They're not getting any worse, but they're not getting any better. We continue each year to expand on the training that we require from everybody. We're expanding on the certifications that we require from people, yet we're not improving anything. We're still killing 5,000 people every year. And we need to look at the reasons why. The primary reason that we're not improving is to understand the way that this model is supposed to work. This is a manager's food safety certification. It's being given to the people in charge and the way that this program was designed, the reason that we don't require it of every single person in your establishment is that we're training you, the manager, you, the owner, under the assumption that you're going to go back to your establishment and train everybody else. That's where this program has fallen down. That's what's not happening out there the way that it should. We, you have a certain responsibility that you take out of this class. When you receive your certification, you need to do more with it than put it up on the wall and say, hey, look what I got. The purpose of this is to then go back into your kitchen and train the people that are handling the food every day. Your cooks, your, 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 your dishwashers, everybody in your establishment needs to be trained. And you're the person responsible for doing that. You take that responsibility away from this class and it's a responsibility that you need to take very seriously. Other reasons that this training sometimes doesn't get into the right hands is that sometimes management and kitchen staff don't speak the same language. It's something that you need to overcome. If, if that's the case, then, then this program is given in many different languages and you should have somebody certified in each language so that your, your personnel are covered. And sometimes it's just a cost factor. But you know what? You need to overcome that. This is a part of doing business, and it's a very, very important part. If your establishment were to get somebody ill from the food that you serve, the consequences of that far exceed any cost of a food manager's food safety certification. We're here today to take this very seriously. I hope you will as you go through this program. Let's start with the core objectives that are most important in the fundamentals of food safety. Those objectives are to understand the dangers that are associated with foodborne illness. It's being able to identify the five key risk factors that contribute to foodborne illness outbreaks. It's identifying people who are at greatest risk for getting foodborne illness. We're not all at the same risk and it's important to understand and to watch for those people that are at a higher risk. You need to be able to describe the different characteristics of potentially hazardous food. We often call those foods TCS. You'll see that on the test. It's important to remember those initials, TCS. 
It stands for Time and Temperature Control for Safety. It refers to any foods that require controls in the area of time and temperature control. You need to understand what the legal rights of your customers are. They have rights when they come into your establishment. They certainly have the right to expect to be served a safe meal. And there's ramifications to you when they don't. And it's important that you understand those. And you need to understand the 17 elements that the FDA says a food service manager needs to demonstrate to your health department. And you will be asked to demonstrate those. When your health department comes in, they will ask you. But it's also important to understand, and this goes back to training your staff, that the health department is not restricted to just talking to you, the manager or the owner. They can pull anybody into that kitchen and say, hey, do you understand how to do this? Tell me about your job function. Show me the right way to wash your hands. If you haven't trained them, that's a reflection not just on your establishment, it's a reflection on you as an individual. You need to do your job. So I talked a minute ago about pe different people being at a different risk level. It's important to understand who those people are that's the you and your service staff can be aware and know how to deal with those people. Let's start with young children, the elderly and pregnant women. All of these people have one thing in common. Young children do not have fully developed immune systems and the elderly and the pregnant women have had their immune systems compromised. Um, they're, they're not as strong as they used to be. These people are more susceptible to a foodborne illness. Uh, certain bacteria that you and I might be able to ingest freely are going to get them sick. And also individuals that are taking certain medications. All of these people have one thing in common, and that is that they have weakened immune systems. That makes them more susceptible to a foodborne illness. We need to be aware of that. When they ask the questions when they're ordering certain foods, we need to make sure that they're ordering things that are the safest and that we're cooking and preparing and serving things in the safest form possible for these people. They need an extra step of precaution. Okay, so now we understand the people that we need to be aware of. Next, we need to understand the foods that we need to be especially aware of to prevent foodborne illness. These are foods that, have, that are chemically neutral or slightly acidic. They're foods that have moisture in them. They're high in protein. They contain carbohydrates and they're ready to eat foods. All of these foods are foods that are especially susceptible to foodborne illness because all these foods have one thing in common in that they all require time or temperature controls for safety. Next, we need to understand the key risk factors for foodborne illness. Let's take a look at some of those. Foods that are held at an improper temperature. One thing that you have to learn out of this, if nothing else, is 41 and 135. Those are important numbers to remember. All of our cold foods need to be maintained at 41 degrees or lower. Our hot foods are at 135 or higher. That's your proper temperatures. Things held outside of that range are absolutely susceptible to foodborne illness. Inadequately cooked or undercooked food. We'll discuss this later, but you'll learn all the proper cooking temperatures for every food. Contaminated food equipment. This is where cross-contamination is most likely to occur. It's important that we wash, rinse, and sanitize all of our food equipment throughout the day, every time we change a, a task, and at least every four hours. Next is food from an unsafe source. It's important to understand what is considered an unsafe source. An unsafe source, by definition of food safety, is any source that does not meet federal, state, and local laws or local health requirements. And local is really the key word here. Your local regulations will always be your most stringent and they're the ones that you need to follow the closest. It doesn't mean that you can't still go down to your farmer's market or down to the piers to buy your fish, but you have to remember that those items are not being tested as they are by some of your large food distributors. So you are taking a little bit of an extra risk but to always follow your, your local regulations. On the test, you're gonna see questions about this. It's important to remember local regulations because that's the key. Lastly, we need to cover poor hygienic practices. Poor hygiene is far and away the number one cause of foodborne illness outbreaks. If you learn nothing else from today, and we're gonna talk about it extensively, it's how to correct some of the hygiene practices in your establishment. The next topic is rights and responsibilities. 
And it's important to understand that we're in business not just to serve food, but there's an additional responsibility that comes with just showing up and handing somebody a plate of food. Let's take a look at those. Those responsibilities include the primary responsibility of any food establishment to ensure food safety. Your customers are coming into you, they absolutely expect not to get sick. They certainly don't expect to die as 100 people a week right now are doing. And it is the right of the consumer to receive safe food that will not cause harm or illness. We overlook these things, which is one of the reasons we have some of the problems we do, that you know, it's just a given that the food we're serving is safe. It's not, it's not. And we need to raise everybody's awareness level that it's not a given that our food that we're sending out there is safe. Pay attention and make sure that every single plate that comes out of your kitchen and onto your customer's table is as safe as it can be. This concludes our introduction to food safety. Pay close attention to the following videos. And remember, the things we do and the things we don't do in our operations matter to the people we care about most every day.